the importance of transit in Calgary. Yes. And your plan for transit there, and any learnings uh, that you might have in Calgary that might be applicable in Toronto. I may as well say a few controversial things. <laughs> Subways are better. That's unambiguously true. Subways are better than surface transit. They are also far, far, far more expensive. So we as people in these positions have to make a lot of decisions about how do we optimize the amount of money that we've got available versus the mode of transportation. So we've had very, very similar discussions to what you had in Toronto. Uh, but our discussion is not subway versus LRT, it's LRT versus bus rapid transit. We're at the next level down. When I was first elected, I was very surprised to learn that there was no long-term plan for transit in the city. As money became available on an ad hoc basis from provincial and federal governments, we'd sort of get the money, look at all the various plans on the shelf, and go, well, this amount of money sort of matches that plan. So let's build that one. Um, and so one of the first things I did was craft a 30-year capital uh, operating and customer service plan for transit in Calgary, which is called Route Ahead. It's actually very good. I really like it. Um, it's called, hey, you can find out more at routeahead.ca. That is a $13 billion plan for transit over the, next 13, over the next 30 years, including rail and bus. We're making a big bet on bus rapid transit and dedicated busways uh, throughout Calgary. And I'm excited about it, but it's $13 billion. And today I have, I used to say I have zero. I now have $1 billion. So I've only got 12 to go. Um, but that $1 billion is going to build up seven major transit corridors across the city, which I'm very excited about. Um, so in any case, we've got to make it work. Transit has to go from being the choice for people who have no other choice to the preferred choice of people. That means it has to be safe, it has to be welcoming, it has to be convenient, uh, and it has to be reliable. And those are the things that uh, we're working very hard on. We're not doing a great job. We could do much, much better. But we're starting to do that. The big issue, though, is money. And that's true in every city in this country. Um, Canada remains the only country in the G7 that does not have a consistent national funding strategy for transit from the central government. And we need one very, very, very badly. Sure, it's great that the federal government is giving $660 million to the Scarborough subway. Can I say something else controversial? What a stupid idea that is. Um, anyway, uh, when you could have had an LRT for less money to serve far more people and have the same travel time, what are you thinking? Um, but anyway, it's great that the federal government is doing that, but it's totally ad hoc. It's totally episodic. When Jim Flaherty, the Minister of Finance, was asked, why are you funding the Toronto subway? His response was, because they asked. Um, that is not a great response. And so it really is time for the federal and provincial governments to get their heads together and say, okay, this is important. And it actually really bothers me that you had a provincial government here in Ontario that was willing to make a huge, huge funding bet on transit in this city, and that your city council frittered it away. That's, that's criminal. And uh, I think that uh, if I had had that sort of opportunity with my provincial government, man, we'd be building a lot of transit today. And so the last thing I'll say about this is that investments in public transit are among the best investments any government can make. They're investments not just in mobility, their investments in environmental sustainability, their investments in quality of life by reducing congestion and giving people back time, which is the most valuable thing we can give them, and their investments in social inclusion by making it easier for people to get to and from school and work without having to afford a car, we allow people to participate in the community more. And so I think these things are tremendously important. I was thrilled when my council, in what was seen as a very controversial move, set aside $880 million for transit in the last two months. Uh, that's hugely important, and now our job is to actually pay that off. But anyway, the final bit is, you said, what, what lessons have we learned? And the lessons we have learned um, in Calgary really are about ensuring that you're looking at those criteria, reliable, welcoming, safe, convenience. And 
focusing on those instead of on the mode of transportation. So for example, there are people in Calgary who want an LRT line very badly in southeast Calgary, and it just so happens that the length and the terrain make that a tremendously expensive proposition, nearly $3 billion. Instead of waiting until I have $3 billion, we're investing $600 million in creating uh, dedicated bus lanes in that area that can be converted to rail later. And those dedicated bus lanes cost, as you heard, less than one-third of the cost of the whole system. But in terms of the travel time savings to people who are traveling, they deliver almost 80% of the savings in time. And given that time is what people really care about, not whether the vehicle has wheels or rails, we can actually get people um, to where they're going more conveniently by spending far less money, and that's probably our biggest lesson. Sure, they're mad, they'd rather have rail, but when the busways are built and they receive a much higher quality of service, I think people are going to be very satisfied.